A few words about the sensory investigation food game and how to apply and develop its lessons. It's a lesson in descriptive analysis, which is going to be your core skill that you'll be doing over and over again, including in your capstone project, your final writing project. So you're starting to develop an awareness of what it means to describe with language that is precise, concrete, specific, and attentive to subtle details. Those are the words I kept using in my responses to everyone to, to really underline where you attained that because that's how you want to write about art. Precision is incredibly important. So let's look up the precise definition of precise marked by exactness and accuracy of expression or detail. Exact, accurate, and careful about details. Used to emphasize that one is referring to an exact and particular thing. This is the heart of descriptive writing that leads to insightful analysis. And it's the opposite of vague. So let's be precise about the definition of vague, which is uncertain, indefinite, unclear, imprecise, unfocused. And there's a, there's a little example here. Saying something or someone is tall is vague because what particular height makes something tall? Is it a giraffe at, I don't know how tall are giraffes, 25 feet tall? Or is it a seven foot tall NBA player? My dog would think anything over four feet is pretty tall. Take a look at how marvelously precise, concrete, and specific Alexander is in these, this analysis. Because already what you're doing with sensory investigation is analyzing, which means breaking things down into its part. Look particularly here, under the water, one can hear taps on its thick skin, like small droplets on an umbrella. When one drops it, it makes an audible thud. I can really hear that. Similarly, Taras shows what the great Russian writer Vladimir Nabokov meant when he said that a writer's job is to caress the divine details. Look at this description of the smell. The smell of it is strong and can be even strange. It can smell like caramel, nuts, or fruit. Those are not vague. It, it's not vague would be it smells good specific is, and precise is caramel, nuts, or fruit mixed with the smell of something roasted and almost burnt, the smell of herbs and earth. So what good descriptive writing does is it gets us closer to the rich complexity of the object, of the experience of it. And that is so important in art. And it's what I want to see you doing in your final project and practicing doing in the kind of low stakes practice writing assignments that we'll be doing throughout the semester. Pay attention to when the textbook writers are also using language in ways that are precise, concrete, specific, and pay attention to subtle details and how that enables you to see more and understand more. So here in this portrait by the brilliant painter Rembrandt van Rijn, it's a self-portrait. Look at this sentence. A few well-paced placed brushstrokes suggest physical tension in the fingers. So now you look in an exact place, you're being very precise. The language of the writing is drawing you to look at the fingers and weariness in the deep set eye. So now the language of the writing is again being precise. Look here, notice this. This painting is incredibly complex, even though it's a simple self-portrait. And the job of the writer is to uh, reveal that complexity so that we understand how so many elements are contributing to the experience we have of seeing it and the meaning it presents. So they go on to speak of it being mercilessly analytical. The portrait depicts the furrowed brow, sagging flesh, and aging face of one who has suffered pitfalls but managed to survive, retaining his dignity. Now they have moved away from direct empirical investigation. 
such as saying, look at the paint strokes around the eyes. But they've earned these statements. These are claims that they have earned by looking so closely and showing us where to look for the fingers and the eyes that depict that aging, that dignity, that survival story. So don't, when you're writing about art, go straight to the story. You have to earn your claims about the story by first paying very close attention with precise description to what is actually, what the artist has actually chosen to do. Because everything the artist has done is purposeful. And your job is to study that in order to ascertain the purpose.